About 10 days ago, when I was present at the ceremonies where President Roman was there, when Toyota, responding to the efforts of George D, agreed to donate the very attractive 100 million peso building to UP, its architect, Jose Silvestre, Dean of the College of Agriculture, assured me that he and the other alumni, like Mr. Parafox, and other landscape designers will be willing to donate their time and expertise to landscape your large campus free of charge. I'm not sure where. <laughs> Maintenance of a new campus may be assigned to building occupants or fraternities or student organizations or maybe you can collect parking fees from cars parked in the campus. Talented Filipino artists and sculptors can then be encouraged to display their work in the campus, free of charge, of course. But does UP have a long-term development plan for your very large campus? UP and tourism. Our three million arrivals a year are way behind our neighbors 10 to 12 million visitors. Tourism benefits all the people in the countryside. Our people are known to be the most hospitable and friendly. We are ahead of our neighbors in English, the first language of tourism. When I visited Bohol last year, I was told that the influx of German tourists to the attractive island is due to the 200 Germans who have happily settled there with their Filipina wives. And that they have put small inns and so on into the website, and so the German tourists have gone straight to Bohol. The hospitality industry will be the growth area of the country where your different schools play a major role in assisting Secretary Durano to achieve his targets. European agriculture. I've met many sites who are graduates of the prestigious Los Banos Agricultural School. But I wonder why the sites who usually bring back an attractive Filipina wife have made Thai agriculture much more productive and efficient than what we have been able to do here. Let us take notice of the Dole success story. As Dean of the Business School, Cesar Virata has strongly advocated cooperation with Los Banos. Through his efforts, Dole established their very successful and productive ag agribusiness operations in Mindanao. With the Catholic Church campaign against a sound government population policy, which in turn hampers, hampers the country's capacity for addressing its population growth rate, perhaps UP's contribution to increasing rice production can prevent a recurrence of the problem that we had this year. I was on the board of a Malaysian palm oil company that was diversifying into bamboo. They told me the bamboo experts of Asia were in Los Banos, yet we import bamboo shoots from China. Since agriculture is still the most important part of our economy, shouldn't UP then, in cooperation with successful farmers, put particular focus on the study and implementation of efficient food production to bring food costs down. Thailand's per capita income is higher than the Philippines, but the cost of food in Thailand is much lower than here. So in that sense, they have been moving ahead of us. Then alumni relations. A new university 
has the disadvantage of not having a successful alumni group that you can tap for funds. UP has the advantage of celebrating a centennial with very distinguished and wealthy graduates in practically every field of activity. But has your dependence on government funds resulted in the neglect of your alumni? How many buildings, laboratories, auditoriums, professional chairs have been donated by your many prosperous alumni? Many of the facilities at the Philippine General Hospital needs improvement, yet this was the training ground of many doctors from the University of the Philippines. One very socially responsible UP medical school graduate in the United States, who is planning to retire here, told me that he was shocked when some of his classmates here were bragging about how little taxes they were paying in spite of their luxurious houses, cars, and trips abroad. Are your alumni aware that they can legally reduce taxes by donating to UP? Maybe yearly seminars to update your graduates on the latest development in their professions can encourage them to give an annual amount to the university. I've no doubt that the well-organized and aggressive alumni relations office will yield dividends for the universities and for the nation. And my last major comment is on faculty. The greatness of any university is always measured by its faculty. Faculty that will inspire and not merely instruct. Mentors that will encourage learning and the use of this knowledge towards nation building. A nation's progress is also determined by what it does to develop its human resources. I read the report of your National College of Public Administration and Governance and was very impressed with the qualifications of the faculty and lecturers as listed in this brochure. Aside from seminars, publications, and workshops, wouldn't it be wonderful if they can implement the many changes they are advocating in basic education, in the civil service, in local government, and in the fight against corruption? My contacts with your faculty are mainly from your excellent school of economics and the business school, and of course, with Cynthia Bautista, who has given invaluable help to the Maksai Sai Foundation in focusing on its plans for the next 50 years. Is this standard of excellence I see also found in your other departments? Can UP encourage its bright faculty to publish objective position papers on national issues that will stop the endless and confusing debates that are in full-page ads in the daily newspapers. Considering the contribu contribution UP can make in our nation's future, <coughs> should this university not have a think tank with experts from its different schools, possibly also working with non-UP graduates, to study where the nation is today, its negatives and positives, and how it could move forward in the next 25 and 50 years. Hopefully, our many bright people will unite behind this program to reduce poverty and put the Philippines again in a respectable position in Asia. Maybe some of the many questions that I've raised here. It may be too much to expect from an educational institution with limited funding to solve all of our national problems. 
But it's the price of leadership that you have. The brightest young men and women come to your campus, and for these young minds, you must endeavor to attract and retain the best faculty in every school. It's my profound hope that against all these challenges, this great university with an inspired administration, a strong faculty, and an alumni conscious of its responsibility to the nation, can together with the sector of education take the lead in the implementation of major reforms in our public schools without which poverty reduction will be difficult and without which equal opportunity for all its citizens to benefit from economic growth will not be attainable. With the, with the present financial difficulties facing the developed world, optimists are in short supply. But can we hope that we could follow the path of Ireland, also a very strong Catholic country, that was able to convince the political parties to adopt a common economic program, which resulted in the return of young, talented Irish people who had migrated to the United States and United Kingdom. And the result is that the Irish per capita income now is higher than that of the United Kingdom. My question is this, can the very competent and disciplined economies of UP lead in such an effort of a national program? Only then can a united, peaceful, and prosperous nation become a reality. UP alumni closely identify the oblation with their alma mater. But how many of them really know that when the sculptor Tolentino created the figure of a young man whose arms are outstretched in a gesture of sacrifice to his country and humanity, that the, that the artist also plays at its feet a cluster of katakalantan leaves, a plant that rapidly multiplies to symbolize as Tolentino tells us, the, quote, undying stream of heroism in the Filipino race. As this university celebrates its 100th anniversary, I ask a final question. Can we expect from UP's leadership this heroism the country begs for? Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sisip, for your thought-provoking questions. While our